Dr. Kashmi Mondor, Assistant Professor, Basic Science and Humanities Department, feel thrilled to stand before you as your MC for today as we embark on this exciting journey filled with endless possibilities, learning and growth of our two-day long orientation program. For today's program, let us be guided by the words of the great Kobi Guru Rabindranath Thakur. Hey Nuton, Dekhadi Barbar, John Miro Prothom Shubhokkon, Tomaro Prakasho Hok, Kuheli Kakoli, Kori Udghaton. Seen a new time and again, the first auspicious moment of birth. May your life. These words remind us that every new encounter, every fresh beginning, is a moment of profound significance. They inspire us to embrace the light of knowledge and beauty of new experiences just like the rising sun. As we gather here for this orientation program, let us remember that today is not just a beginning of a new chapter, but the opening of a treasure chest of opportunities. Let us welcome this day with open hearts and open minds, ready to learn, grow, and create memories that will last a lifetime. On behalf of my entire department, I would like to extend my best wishes and heartfelt gratitude to all of you who are present on this auspicious occasion. Today is a day filled with hope, aspiration, and promise of a brighter future. We would like to commence this orientation program with enthusiasm and a sense of wonder, just as Kobi Guru Rabindranath Thakur envisioned. We are extremely honored to have with us our guest of honor, Professor Devi Prashant Duwari, former director, MP Birla Institute of Fundamental Research, and Dr. Radha Tomal Goshami. Honorable Director, Techno International Newtown. I also heartily welcome all heads of the department, Techno International Newtown. Mr. Shomo Gandhi Dash, Training and Placement Officer of Techno International Newtown, who will be joining us shortly. Faculty and staff members, and last but not the least, my dear students. Let me remind you that Techno International Newtown is not a college. It is a community of passionate learners, innovators, and achievers. Directive, sir, dream state, and where challenges become opportunities, where potential is nurtured and celebrated. During your time here, you will be exposed to cutting edge of technology, renowned and experienced faculty members, and a supportive environment that will enable you to excel in your chosen stream. So, to our first year BTEC students, I encourage you to embrace this opportunity with enthusiasm curiosity and a hunger for knowledge. So moving on, let me mention we are about to commence a symbolic and beautiful act as a part of today's inauguration. Just as we plant the seeds of knowledge, creativity and collaboration in our hearts, it is equally important to care for and nurture the green life that surrounds us. So without further ado, I invite Professor Vibhushat Duwari and our Honorable Director Sir Dr. Radha Tamal Goshami to join hands in watering the plants to mark our college's commitment to sustainability and our responsibility to protect and cherish the earth. I also do request Dr. Shayantika Bosh Chakraborty to join in the watering of the plant ceremony and all the other HODs. While the ceremony will go on in the spirit of honoring education, we would present a beautiful performance of Sharshuti Bandana as our opening song, which will be performed by our students. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Department is tirelessly working to create an environment of academic excellence where learning flourishes. Her skills in administration have brought order and efficiency to our department, ensuring that everything runs smoothly from curriculum planning to other activities. Her approachability and willingness to listen makes her not just as an authority figure but a friend and guide to us all, creating a warm and welcoming atmosphere in our department. I would like to invite Madam on stage to speak a few words and address our audience. Thank you, Kashmi, for those wonderful words. A very good morning to one and all present here today. On behalf of the Department of Basic Science and Humanities, I extend a very warm welcome to the illustrious guest of honor, Dr. Devi Prashad Duari, the Honorable Director of Techno International Newtown, Dr. R.T. Goshami, the respectable heads of the different departments, faculty members, and beloved students. Welcome to this orientation program a concluding chapter to the three week long induction program designed specially for the new batch of tech students at TINT. TINT aims to train graduates in their respective branch department of study to help them have a holistic outlook towards life and have a desire to work for national needs and beyond. The graduating student must have excellent knowledge, skill sets in their However, he must also have broad understanding of society and relationships. Character needs to be nurtured as an essential quality by which he or she will understand and fulfill the responsibility as an engineer, a citizen, and more importantly, as a human being. Besides the above, several meta skills and underlying values are needed. A student must determine for himself or what he or she wants out of this life. The success of gaining admission into a desired institution, but failure in getting the desired branch or otherwise, with the peer pressure generating its own problems often leads to a peer environment that is demotivated and corrosive.
For some, the start of the hostel life without close parental supervision at the same time further worsens it with a poor daily routine. The purpose of the student induction program is to help the new students adjust and feel comfortable in the new environment. Inculcate in them the ethos and culture of the institution. Help them build bonds with other students, faculty members, and expose them to a sense of larger purpose and self-exploration. We have tried to nurture these through the induction program and its various activities on physical activity, creative arts and culture, universal human values, familiarization with the college and departments, interaction with the mentors, bridge course classes, mental health sessions, professional bodies, technical clubs, interaction with alumni, extracurricular activities and clubs, and finally, the feedback on the induction program. We really hope that this induction program has given you an insight into some of the aspects of this institution, which is going to be your second your personality for the rest of your lives. Enjoy your stay here. Well, so long you have interacted and met with teachers, academic, non-academic staff, engineering department, faculty members, your mentors, and so on. Today, let me introduce you to the person who has put all this together, who has always been instrumental in activities can channelize the tremendous energy of our students into something good and potential. One who is approachable and affectionate to everyone in the Institute. One who has always stood tall and strong beside all of us and the students. May I call on stage the Honorable Director of the Institute, Dr. Aarti Goshami, to give the inaugural address. Sir. Good morning to all of you. When I said good morning, you also reply with the good morning voice. Good morning to all of you. That's great. Thank you, Dr. Mosha Purvati. She said many things about me. I'm not, not of that thing. And first of all, on behalf of the entire TIT, I welcome Professor Duhari. Thank you, sir, for giving us time. Whenever I approach, he immediately responded, yes, I'll be there, but there was a time date you're coinciding with his own activity, the pre-assigned activity. So he shifted it from it to 13. Initially we thought about 13, uh, sorry, 14. One thing I must say in front of my all colleagues who are sitting over here, the HOD's faculty and everyone, the TINT is said to have a very good team. And it is already said. So now this his speech is ready. Everybody can run on here. You can get very good run. Here, no individual can do anything over here. All the team people, my team, is all set to 
do very good in future i will present you a presentation about this college and about your activity today i know the all students are not here not here ec and electrical civil mechanical and some of the computer science specialization people are here csc it and i suppose iot will be tomorrow iot is here because of the space we could not accommodate the all the people but we do have a live streaming there speech i have just run through it i have just gone through it and i said this okay so that's why in the beginning i said this everybody we can if we do not talk each other but everybody understand what i want to mean what i want to say and i also understand the same way as you put it so this is the part of tiint so to you for the tiint the place where you have taken your admissions you give a big clap for that and that's the tiint that's the best part of tiint you see these are the areas where we are working at present and we are very good eminent and qualified faculty we do believe over here that if the faculty is very good faculty in terms of everything not only the quality teaching quality research everything like your mentoring talking to the faculty if you have any problem it is very good and it's not like the department specific it can be any department so ai department having some problem then problem is acting anything related to they require certain suggestions he can he or she can approach to anyone so to the students you must first know your this is the primary objective when you join any organization join any crew school or college you first know the different people right from the top to the downstream to the downstream you must understand who are they who are the key or the not only your teacher even the non teaching staff as well so you first know the individual rooms where this sit and who are the what are their portfolios that you must know so we do have a very qualified faculty coming to the international collaboration we do have different international collaboration exist and somebody else are waiting okay so international collaboration means we do have a different kind of collaborations exist with different foreign countries in terms of faculty exchange in terms of student exchange and etc you can have a credit transfer as well recently we do have a earlier also we do have that uh, credit transfer and this coming january december our students the final third year students will be visiting china similarly somebody visited france and other places you get to know from the international department these things even through your mentors as well as well state of the art infrastructure we do have all kind of facilities available not only your teaching facility your research your project everything then holistic development through, through student clubs your madam just now tell just now emphasize on the different clubs we do have different kind of because we do believe that not only only teaching and the your classroom orientation give you the full set of values or invite the values to you suppose somebody have a inclination towards the music they can join the music club somebody wants to have inclination towards the cinema picture this kind of they can do that if you do good painting drawing join those clubs and apart from that then the music club i already said so these all clubs exist apart from that the technical clubs which is mandatory would you have a very big your science club then your coding club all this exists and the different coordinators are there this is your duty to talk to your vendor and get to know your uh, who are the coordinator and your one you have the madam or mr madam will share with you the form and there is a certain rules and regulations there you join there you can uh, immediately fill the fill up the form google form and join the different clubs because this is required you need to release your energy academic is mandatory academic is very important but to release the energy this is very important another thing joining any organization joining any schools or college or joining this one thing is very important your discipline discipline means your punctuality 
your timely attendance, everything is important because these small, small things actually will be required when you pass out from this institution, join any professional organization or join any higher studies. I said about the project, like emphasis on entrepreneurship skills. This actually tells about that you no, know, everybody cannot be entrepreneur. But what happened? Somebody may be entrepreneur, or all of you, that out of box thinking. Your textbook teaching is important to get good grade or point marks in your examination. But at the same time, your application brain is very much important because your CV should be improved not only with the grades, your extra things. Like you can work with the projects. <coughs> now you can. Now you can have uh, then your projects, then your research. This all aspect is important. <coughs> Let me share you one simple things to you. All of you might be aware of that Smart India Hackathon. Now Hackathon is very popular thing over here. Now Smart India Hackathon is nowadays conducted by the Ministry of Higher Education, Government of India and EICT, All India Council for Technical Education. Earlier, we do have a team like 20, 30, even different colleges. This year, we got a, your participation from 120 teams. Still, we have to close it. We could not accommodate. 120 teams, you can move around any of the colleges. Nobody have that kind of. So this is TINT. This is the success of TINT. Similarly, our different projects is been <coughs> is there. We got different projects from different organization, the government organization, DST, Central Government DST, Department of Science and Technology. The name may not be very familiar to you. But the projects is now eight projects is running with a funding. <coughs> and these projects, students can work with the faculty. Then different research papers, people can understand and can write. You do it from the very first year, you meet your even your basic science faculty and engage themselves in different projects. Some of the projects are already being adjourned and your got prizes in different places even outside India. And you meet those faculty in due course of time and get to know. Even the last two years, the so basic science and humanities department is conducting one project competition that's called Sintila. And from Sintila, we have we choose some of the projects and we give, give it to the your MSME, that is called Government of India MSME Business Incubation for Incubating. So these are all part of the entrepreneurship development. So start, but your first primary objective must be you should do good in your academics. You understand your subject. You are in the very first year, first semester, and you need to understand the different languages. Language means I what I'm talking about is not computer languages. You must understand the three subjects: the physics, chemistry, mathematics, along with English. And you do have a biology as well. That means science, you are doing your engineering, but if you do not understand science properly and its application and its objectivity, then your engineering will be more useful. So this is your primary practice in first year that you must have an inquisitive sense that why I am studying because you have studied mathematics in your class 12. But here also why I am studying this, where the application is there, in which branches, some of you are studying from computer science ID, some of you from EIE, some from EC, where it will be applicable. So these are the very important. Placement, we are all looking for that one. Place community with the skills important and the knowledge generated. You generate yourself nowadays. Think of you can see around everywhere. Even in the if you go somebody from, from the somebody want after BTA, you want to the MPA. If you were, get a chance to do it in any of the IIMs, suppose in IIM Ahmedabad, in IIM Ahmedabad, the major focus is on the entrepreneurship. To encourage collaborative and interdisciplinary research in partnership with the industry and other academic institutions with the aim of instilling and urge for lifelong learning in the students. 
interdisciplinary. Nowadays, maximum focus is given to the interdisciplinary work. Suppose you are mechanical, there is no way because mechanical will be tapped to the computer side. You want to see that what are the applications are there. You need to unite you yourself looking at the future, not with the present. Present will definitely you are here, but to the future. These are the courses. I am just giving you know all of these courses available over here. Mentorship. This is the one of the the best part of this institute. You will get academic guidance. You will get career and professional development guidance from the very first year, first semester, second semester. We do have a thoroughly in the exam. We are taking feedback from anyone, and that always take the feedback positively. So you, you this is the place. Where you take the positive thing and filter it out the negative one. Skill development and the feedback, personal and emotional support, networking and professional connections, research and scholarly activities. Though you got a chance to do your bachelor's degree in engineering, but with your feedback from here to the parent, what you are doing, go is everything. Counseling fitness, we do have a professional counselors. You have. Any or talk to the preventers and they will take you to there. Then we have a resident doctor also. He is also coming regularly three weeks a day, uh, three times a week. So confidentiality and privacy, student counseling services at TINT, I already said. Education and all these things are there. Counseling procedures are there. This is another beautiful part, and this is you are fortunate to have this kind of facility to be given to you. This is thank you. I first thanks to person, uh, one person first, that's Professor C.K. Paul is a senior is, uh, professor at Asian Post Institute. He has helped us to give this, the beautiful uh, your innovation to facilitate these things to our students and to take these things. And one of the researchers, Dr. Rupita Chattopadhyay, in your department, the physics department, she took the pain having this thing, and your HOD, Dr. Shantika Goswamuthi, I can, I, let me go to the for go some things here. This is, I want to, this is called ADHD diagnosis. What is the full form? The you are here? Yes. Uh, just come here. You join me and you explain with me that will be better. You got this, right? I give this mic to Orpita, but before, uh, the better, she will explain it more. Properly. Okay, so. So ADHD. What is ADHD? Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Actually, uh, attention. Do you know what is attention? Suppose when you are studying, then sometimes. Uh, you feel lost, that is, your mind is suffering. So, we are actually tracking this attention. How we are tracking? Our brain waves. There are some low frequency signals coming out of the brain. So, we are tapping that signal using a bow. You will see this thing. Okay. So ADHD diagnosis, it is a, it is sometimes we just brag this student, this maybe he or she is forgetful, disorganized, hyperactive, but there must be something going on inside his or her head. So we are using this facility, uh, this is ADHD uh, diagnosis, using one instrument, this is known as Mahar. I'll show you this thing. Yeah. This this will be shown to you. Uh, we'll be tracking your learning and during your attention during your learning and as well as when you will be moving. So the greatest scientist. Electricity. This is you know this Albert Einstein. He is a very serious person. Usually what do you do? but just see him. Uh, see him. Do you think this is a uh, proper gesture? from that uh, type of uh, scientist, but yes, we always, we all, we all have some, this type of eccentricity, but we, we are not aware of this. You know, how much addition, Da Vinci, and then, some of our 
some of the pictures celebrities they all have this learning disorder and this so what we are doing here Uh, this is the problem and opportunity. This is part of research because we always need to prove ourselves that why this research is required. That's why this is our argument why we are doing this. And then uh, I've been tested once. Yes, you can see my. Yes, you can see. This is the. This is the flow of what we are discussing. This is the flow, kind of mind flow, and these are the waves. The waves always they are generating. From all of mind. all of you will be tested over here. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry. So these are the tests. Well, so that nothing happened to me, then I'll test. <laughs> so these are the This is a hyperactive. Uh, this is hyperactive. This is also something. somebody is very hyperactive. That also checked. And this is for diagnosis. And how we can channelize her yeah. is our heart energy. That is also will be part of our study. This is the your instrument. So these are the test results. We don't know yet what is the normative mode but because uh, most of the because we know lots of data like 500,000 data over there only we can tell this this is the normal person behavior so we are analyzing the data but it is only even I have request on my faculty also can be tested we will be more than happy sir so this is the conventional mode and you can see this is my picture can you I see the flow? Over surface. So this is the flow we'll be using. This one, this one. On all of you. And it is there in the same institute only. And this is madam standing here, another madam also here. So there are two uh, your uh, activity was there, as you pointed out. One activity is put these things on the head and I have to do some draw something. The balls here, some other drawing. And see the attention. Yes. I, uh, well, I did a very good thing, good result. Uh -huh. and another is the ball. I go and collect the ball and come back this way, this activity. So in that way, then a graph will be plotted and your diagnosis will be done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Uttida. So this is about the new things. I certain things, certain information I have already said, not in line with the presentation. But you can see this is the research and development statistics. We do have 16 patents and two copyrights. Projected, uh, your project completed one under government of Bolivia called the matter just clear under our leadership. I was also that one project has completed the, from the pollution control board. Then prism project, I just mentioned that eight projects is there. It has been there in the DST as granted. Some of the faculties are sitting over here also. Ongoing accepted three under reading and the more projects has already been submitted. Their students has a role. Sentila, I have already mentioned this is a kind of a signature event, a beautiful event by the BSA department started last year when uh, your Ijoki Kakuli was there. And this year also huge person there is a huge project submitted there. Then we have internal hackathon for SIH. I just mentioned about that. 120 teams participated. Apart from that, we do have the IIC, Institute Innovation Council, your civil engineering HOD, Dr. Shanjoy uh, Dash Neogi, he is the coordinator for that. For incubation, Dr. Ipshita Gato is the coordinator. Then we do have the Kapila, your faculty member, Dr. Papiya Devna, she is the coordinator. Then we have the uh, other one, NISP, Professor P.K. Ghosh is there, and Jukti, Dr. Shamushi Ghosh is there, they are the coordinator. These are all under the umbrella of IQSE. And IQSE, Dr. Oil Chapter with the IT8, is the coordinator for that. And so this is IQSE, under, under IQSE, all these things exist. And these are the, some of the glimpses of some of the pictures, the project presentation, and this is Sentila projects. I'm just quickly going through, uh, let me, project innovation, I just said, and it was there. Because I I just said that you can see, this is the Kapila, Jukti, NISP, all these are there. You get to know, I request my uh, colleagues to let them know that what are the things that this is, these are 
Entrepreneurship, I said many things about the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship is look, looking after by the project figure also. I'm talking about entrepreneurship means I'm talking about the business incubation. These are the committees which do exist. Academic committee, examination committee, disciplinary committee, anti ragging internal complex, library, cultural and sports. Sports, Dr. Amarindu Shinga Mahapato and uh, Professor Takushi is looking after the sports activity. Academic and professional bodies, I said about that, IQAC, IAC, IPR. I request these are the chapters we exist, that ISD, ACM, IEEE, IEI. You make yourself immediately member of those. I again, once again request my team to follow it up and we must have, because I once again I said, your biodata is incomplete. Only incomplete if you do not have this kind of professional engagement. If you do not have the project engagement, if you do not have that those kind of things, so then it will be incomplete. These are the, some of the pictures. He is helping a lot. This person he is the director, of state at IIT Kharagpur. He is regularly regularly visiting us. Technical clubs we have GDSC club, Google Developer Club, Genesis Club, and Coding Club. I said so. Full of activities are there. <coughs> Extra curricular activities. Today also in the evening we'll find that. Performance by our Ritmajare musical club and the senior people will give kind of a beautiful presentation. And then we have the Ritmajare club, photography club, talkies club, Litwitz, the literary club, art club, Kornasi club, NSS club, and we also have the hikers club. It is not being mentioned hikers club for trekking purpose. <coughs> Trading and placement, I am not going into the details. I have said already how many companies, how many things, but one thing is very important. That I'll tell you. If you are not well practiced, well educated in terms of the trading and placement, company will not offer you anything. Huge number of company will definitely visit you. Company will come to pick you up. But if you are not well prepared, then because the job will be offered by them only, will not offer. We'll do the assistance of that. We can prepare yourself so that you are well prepared. You can face the challenges, you can face the real world, but it should come from yourself. So you should be very and very first year. If you think of from third year, you start fourth year, it will be too late. From the very first year, you have to start and you need to listen to the mentor. You need to talk to the training and placement head so that the preparation should be online. So these are the company visited. I can tell you one statistics. This is a, we do have a strategy. Of the Capgemini last year, show me last year. Also. Last year, the Capgemini took 100. This was the highest record from of all the colleges you can take on 100 on campus jobs, apart from other jobs. 100 students from Techno International Newton got the job in Capgemini. This is a huge success from the students, and the students have proved it. So this is about trading and placement. These are the, some of the success stories. Even yesterday also you had the four alumni talked about their success and talked about this college. And this is the success stories. These are the Capgemini you can see. I know what I said, what I said before and it is there. These are all success stories. You should feel proud of your seniors. So once again, thank you very much. And TIT wishes a very bright future. You have a beautiful faculty, your guardian, your friend, whatever the way you can call it, you have a very beautiful team. But one thing is there, you must have a very disciplined approach to everything. Disciplined approach means doing the classes regularly, coming to the classes regularly, maintain the your academic activity very properly in a very calibrated fashion. All you have to do, then you will get the best result. And you should do with your passion and enjoy your study over here. Thank you very much. One customer is in like to 
I request all my HODs, training and placement head, and uh, mentor if you are pre anybody present also come and uh, please come over here and uh, your uh, examination head. Let me introduce them to them to in front of all of you. This is my team. Tomorrow, who is your team? Tomorrow, sir, even teacher. Today, who is that? Sorry. The most senior person in this college, Dr. Milan Basu, the head of the Department of Electrical Engineering Department. Dr. Tapos Nandi, the head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Dr. Nandu Das, head of the Department of Instrumentation Engineering. Professor Indojit Pandey, he is the head of your examination department. He looks after the examination, the most vital part. Dr. Manavendra Maithi is the head of the department of electronics and communication engineering. Dr. Royal Chakravarti is the head of the department of information technology department. So, you have to remember that you have to be because these are all interconnected. One second I said, this is a complete team. Even some are not here, but everybody is a team. Professor Shagatopal, Dr. Shagatopal is the head of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. One of the most vital member, you need to visit frequently. <laughs> you make his work miserable, this thing. This is Dr. Mr. Shomu Ganti Das is the head of training and placement. <laughs> Dr. Shankar Das Niyoni is the head of the Civil Engineering Department. Dr. Oman Ghos is the head of the your BCA and MCA, Computer Application Department. And you already met her. Dr. Shayantika Boschapurthi, head of the Department of Basic Science and Humanity Department. And Professor Ipshita Ghatog, head of the Management Department. See, this is the beauty. I have not mistaken any of the names. The spelling, uh, sorry, they are title. Along with title, I have said everybody's name. That is the team we have created. And if I call each and every faculty over here, I can call them in their name. With their this thing. Then, in due course of time, you'll get to know. Thank you. Director, sir, and this presentation will indeed leave a lasting impression. Moving on with the program, we shall begin with the felicitation ceremony. But prior to that, I would like to request Professor Devi Prashad Duari and our Honorable Director, sir, to grace the dais with their gracious presence. our chief guest, Professor Devi Prashad Duwari, who has spared his precious time to be with us today. We are so grateful <laughs> to
request our dignitaries to kindly take their seats on the sofa. I think uh, if you can kindly switch off this light also, they don't need to see me. Why me? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, yes. What is it? It's a uh, fantastic. Right, good. So I can make whatever, but I can do whatever I want to do, you cannot because the light is on. Right. Thank you very much, Techno International New Town, for not only inviting me here today, but also to give an insight to the working of this fellow. And especially I should congratulate HOD ma'am of Basic Science and Humanities, the way he she introduced the whole idea of an orientation program, an induction program. I really, really appreciate it, the whole lecture. And about Professor Goswami, I think I, I, I think I should not mention anything. He is much higher than me. Uh, why? Because he has created this fantastic institute, not for any other things. And I think you are all very lucky. Believe me, it's not a. When I, they are not paying me to advertise at the end, but I still believe strongly you are very lucky to get admission into this college because one thing which was mentioned in the lecture was that the college, the experiences, the memories will live with you throughout your life. And so if in Bengali we have this word that if you start nicely in a very robust way, your path forward in the future is always very happy. So today, I think you have started on the journey of your life to become a meaningful person, first to yourself and then to the society. And for that meaningful approach towards life, your college, your institute, TINT, New Town, will be one of the key factors. And I hope, I wish all of you a fantastic time ahead in the coming four years, and also request you to get as much as possible not only in terms of your regular syllabus, curriculum, coaching materials, but also in terms of the experience of working on life. And that is the best part of your career, at least now. Uh, my talk, I think uh, my talk is uh, scheduled for three and a half hours. Are you getting worried? I don't get worried. I'm not going to talk about that. It's basically about the cosmos. And you may find, you may feel that we are here to study engineering. And the best of us will join the sector five, where cosmos has no part to play. But amazingly, the scenario, the philosophy is changing very fast as we go in the coming eras, in the coming days. Thousands of years back, when our ancestors used to look into the they used to wonder what is sky, where is sky, what are those lighted dots we call star, and is there any connection with the star and the earth? With these set of questions and queries, the subject of astronomy was born. So astronomy can be considered as one of the oldest subjects that human minds are judged upon. At the same time, given the huge number of new items that we regularly get to see with the subject of astronomy, astrophysics, cosmology, and general theory of relativity. Whereas, starting from 2000 to 2022, Six Nobel Prizes, 17 Nobel laureates are given Nobel Prize on these subjects. That tells you, I don't have to just shout, it tells you the importance of the subject that is happening. Now it's by. Thousands of years back, our ancestors, thousands of years back, our ancestors used to wonder what is the meaning behind this white head box. They couldn't find an answer, but in their discussion, what they did, they chose different parts of the sky, identified closely space stars. Joined those stars through straight line and created the imaginary figures. 
In this way, the whole sky was divided into eight cave region, each region being governed by an imaginary figure, which we today call constellations of Taramandal. You will be asking me that these are imaginary, right? Why should we learn about it? What is a big deal? And just to share with you a, a private experience, for the last 20 years in Kolkata, almost every year, I had to get involved into some sort of teaching activities with the advanced commandos of the Indian Army's advanced commando school. For six nights, I have to teach the fresh batch of army commandos how to read the night sky. Because if you can read the night sky properly without one of sophisticated instrument, you can get a lot of information on your side. So, even today, they have not lost their relevance. But we have come a long way. Science technology has developed in such a way, breakneck speed, that sometimes we don't keep pace with the development of science and technology. Every country, developing, underdeveloped, fully developed, they are desperately trying to build bigger and bigger telescopes, newer and newer observatories, because they have realized the country which should be the first to understand the deepest because of services, right? Okay. In countries that build 12 telescopes, the smallest one cost is not only in optical light and radio, because we know in the electromagnetic spectrum, only the visible light and the radio wavelength, they can pass through the atmosphere. And so radio telescope is becoming one of the biggest thing to observe the sky. And do you have any idea which is the largest radio telescope in the world? India. 90 kilometers from Pune in Ariana, they have this giant meter wave radio telescope. Each antenna in diameter, 30 antennas arranged in a Y-shaped array so that if they are all observing a single star, they are offering a collective area of 25 square kilometers a single antenna. So my friend, what I am trying to tell you is not that just the information. The newspapers, the television channels, the other people, what they say, at least in West Bengal, portray the real picture of India, at least in science and technology. We always get excited about what somebody is saying, what something is saying, that 5,000 years back, what our ancestors did was well, very good, and that is being copied by the Western society now, and they want, they are saying that we are discovering the story. There is a parallel India, and that parallel India has achieved a tremendous position of prestige in globally in science and technology at least, which you are not made aware of. Why? Because, you know, we are all argumentative Indians. We want to find four, four. Right. How many of you know, in 2018, the government of India has embarked upon a mega science project Seven project total proposed budget is 22 and a half thousand crore rupees. I'm not just saying it, you can see it in the internet. You see, that's the problem. Nobody will point you out to, to these things. And out of the six mega projects, five are in Australia. So this is happening to the poor country, India. We always say, right? India is very poor, but this is happening in India. It's a tremendous, in coming 10 years, they're all going to 45, and it is an amazing, amazing advancement. 1915, picture with some disabilities or something I came to know. <laughs> I'm not discussing theories in the afternoon. But he said, whatever 300 years back, Newton said was probably not correct about gravity. Gravity is not a force. So what he said, he said we all stay in four dimensional space and time. What nonsense. Space XYZ measured by a scale or a ruler or whatever, and time measured by your watch. What is the relation? I'll tell you, I'll meet you at TINT. Tint. Curvature in the space time. And that curvature will tell the other bodies how to approach it. So all your childhood days are we are getting attracted by the center, by the earth at the center. It's not that. The presence of earth produces a curvature. And we are all stuck into that curvature. If we move at a speed of 11 km per second, we go out of the curvature. It's capacity. Right? So in this concept, imagine two small, very heavy objects. They're going around each other. 
Imagine your that king size bed in your bed in your house, the bed sheet. You are doing it with your hand. What will happen? A ripple will get created. Einstein said a ripple will be created in the space time, and it will be called gravitational radiation, gravity waves. Nobody believed it. But 2015, two fantastic lab in Caltech in USA about gravitational waves. Hundred years after it was published, and we'll be happy to know. The first international associate of the laser interferometry gravitational observatory labs, LIGO, is in India or Indica project. In any newspaper, any Facebook, any YouTube channels, that starting from April, the construction of Indigo project has started in Hingoli district in Maharashtra. The proposed budget is 3,700 rupees. So, my friend, India is marching ahead. We don't know, we don't feel it. That's the problem. Right. Okay, enough of that. Sun, moon, and the earth. You say, come on, my kid sister, my younger brother and sister is learning it in LKG1, LKG2. What is the big deal about it? Let me ask you a question. Even to the elders. Suppose the younger ones at your house today tells you, Dada or Didi or Baba Mama, whatever it is, I today I learned earth is going around the sun. What is Philosophy. How many of you? See, this is the point. You have all cracked your joint and whatever, lot of books, lot of this thing. Simple. Point. What is the velocity of Earth around the Sun? 29.5 kilometer per second. Imagine a car in one second moving 30 kilometers. It's about all. See, it never happens. But you are forgetting. You, me, 7.9 million. Existing on the surface of the earth, every second of our existence, they are moving at a velocity of 30 kilometers. Though you are thinking you are sitting tight, I'm thinking I'm standing straight. Amazing. Right. I also wanted to tell you, instead of showing you a lot of data and theory and things, that you are sitting here now, I'm standing here, that we were born, that life happened on earth, is because of a series of accidents. Believe me. It is not because of your the mutual funds analysis of your parents and so on and so forth. No, that we are here is because of such series of chance happenings. I'll prove it. First, 23 and a half degree tilt. You all know that. But you also know that it is, it is because of the tilt, season changes often. Right? So what's the big deal? Okay, tell me, if there were no change of seasons on Earth, what would have happened? Can you tell me? If there are no change of seasons, there will be no ocean currents. If there are no ocean currents, there will be no air currents, no atmosphere. And if there are no air currents, no atmosphere, clouds would not have born somewhere and gathered somewhere else and give us rain and fresh water. Life would not have been possible because just after Earth was born, it would have been a barren desert. So forget about you and me. We all think that we are so powerful, right? Accident will tilt your 23 and degrees. Another thing, times. You'll say, come on, talk about stars, I'm coming to that. But tides are important. Do you know why? Because in your class six or seven, you have all learned life on earth first originated on oceans. Now, how did it come onto the land? Suddenly grew lakes and come onto the land. Every day, high tides is to wash ashore multicellular organisms. Water is to get down, they used to get stranded and killed. Over millions of years, they got the adaptive animals, reptiles, monkeys, and we have a right for the monkeys, right? Have to be focused, <laughs> it's okay. and we have arrived from the monkey. So that you are here is because time stands. So don't don't think that oh come on, hey, chalta hai. Every day, hota hai kya? What is the big deal? Now if I ask you why does tide on? Oh, even the rickshaw knows this thing. It is moon which is gravitationally attracting the water on the earth, right? But you have all studied in class eleven, GM one and two by R square. If you do a back of the envelope calculation after my lecture, you can show sun is attracting earth 173 times more than the moon does. That's why earth is going from the sun. Then why do you say this moon which is attracting the water? Reasons are square distances concerned. What I'm trying to impress on you, you think they are very basic. But to answer them, that's the problem. Tide is not a 
is rather the resultant of quite a number of force over unit distance or m1 m2 by r cube dq r dtq right? or the gradient of the acceleration that's the reason since moon is 3 lakh 84000 kilometers away and sun is 15 crore kilometers away moon wins but a lot of our teachers in our childhood days never told us sun also attracts the water on the earth do you know how much 47% than the moon does that is the problem with our it's not your problem it's our educational system they will teach you everything without going into much depth that's the problem with our education system right Solar eclipse, a beautiful thing, you all know, I don't have to explain. Moon, uh, sorry, sun, moon, earth, the sun's face falling onto the moon, moon shadow falling onto a patch of space, people staying on that patch of space at that point of time, you'll see as if the sun is vanishing, right? It's a beautiful thing. But it was during a total solar eclipse, sun was discovered as a new avatar. They found out from the surface of the sun every second, or on average, 1.6 million tons, 16 lakh tons of charged particles are coming out. This charged particle, as they move through the magnetic field of the sun, they produce this milky white radiation. A charge moving in a magnetic field will radiate. Right? The average velocity of these charged particles are 450 kilometers per second. With that speed, they have enough momentum, enough energy. If they hit any atom or molecule instantaneously, they will break apart. So basically, that means if I stop my lecture now, go up and stand on the sun, the charged particle coming from the surface of the sun, the moment they hit my body, Within fraction of a second, my whole body should be sitting there. Poof, evaporate. But I'm alive, you are alive. Now, I'll come to that. Accident. Right. Moon, beautiful picture. Nowadays, for the last one month or so, moon is in the way. Everybody's mind, Chandra Jamsky, blah, blah, blah. But this is actually a nice picture. What is moon? According to 99% of the scientists, 452 crore years back, 1.5 to million years back, a huge ball of rock came and slammed onto the earth with such a force, huge amount of surface material got gouged up and was thrown up into space. It couldn't go away forever, but going to a very vast distance, for millions of years it condensed, coagulated, coalesced, and has given birth to the moon. This theory goes by the name, the collision ejection theory. Though there are three other theories, co-creation theory, capture theory, fission theory, but 98% of the scientists believe in this theory. And what happened with earth because of this banging? Forever, it got killed by 23 and a half months. Right. Let us start our journey in space and time. You will see about it. It's a literature class, space and time. And if journey means change of space, you need time to do that. No, I'm not saying that. 1905, again, that famous fellow Albert Einstein gave a lot of theories. I'm not discussing theories. But the result was that light is a velocity and it is constant in vacuum and it is the highest velocity that any physical entity can have, 3 lakh kilometer per second. The distance from sun to earth is 15 crore, 3 lakh kilometer per second. If we do a simple division, our reciprocal Madhashika Parshad had made it mandatory that in class 7 or 8 geography books, I don't know why geography or whatever, you have to write, you have to write, the distance between sun and earth is 8.3 light minutes. Or light takes 8.3 minutes to come from sun to earth. But what does it basically mean? It means, if I go out now, look at the sun, I have to tell myself, the sun I'm seeing now, it is the image of the sun as it was 8.3 minutes back and I'm seeing it now. The closest star, Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away. Today evening, if the sky is clear, look at the star and tell yourself, the star I'm seeing now, it is the image of the star as it was 4.2 years back and I'm just seeing it now. So next time, in your household, your younger brother or sister tells you, Dada or Didi, please take me to the science city, spend 50 bucks on a time machine drive. Never. In any clear night, <clears throat> go out into the open, tilt your head. The deeper you are seeing now, you are seeing your own past. You don't understand. The moment we do this, we are doing a time travel in our past. See? And that is why it is so fascinating. We are looking into not only space, but time also. <clears throat> The first of our journey is obviously the solar system. This is an artist impression. Don't think solar system is so colorful. Right. But it's an artist impression. Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, poor Pluto has been kicked out. Right. Sun. I think in your class, now it is five, six. Kids are learning. Sun is a ball of gas. Right? You tell me, my friend, if you take a football, Pump in a lot of colored gas, cut open the football with the gas inside, living like a ball. It will diffuse out. 
Then how come something a ball of gas is not diffusing out into the sky? What does the scientist say? According to the scientist, 460 crore years back, a huge cloud of gas and dust was floating in space. This cloud was made up of 91% hydrogen, 8% helium, 1% rest other elements in terms of number of particles. In terms of mass, 74% hydrogen, 25% helium, 1% rest other elements. The average temperature of this gas cloud was minus 240 degrees centigrade. At this minus 240 degrees centigrade, out of the four fundamental forces of nature, only one type of force comes into play, and that is the force of self gravity. The force of self gravity will attract the periphery of these gas clouds to the center. As the gas goes towards the center, the center density rises. Density means pressure builds up, right? And pressure builds up and temperature rises. A lot of you are saying yes, yes. Who told you? That is the problem with science. You have to tell who told you. Right? Density rise, pressure rise, temperature rise. We have all learned it. That's all. Charles Lavoie's law, my friend, initially. Okay. And the temperature starts rising and rising and rising and ultimately reaches a fascinating level of 1.5 crore degree centigrade. At 1.5 crore degree centigrade, four hydrogen nuclei, as if they come together, fuse together and produce a helium nucleus. This thermonuclear fusion reaction, our scientists have been able to perform it in the labs, but they cannot contain it, control it. That's the reason, until five years back. As a reason, they use it to explode a hydrogen bomb. But inside the sun on a very regulated banner with four hydrogen goes to a helium, nucleus, nuclei to nucleus, huge amount of energy is produced. That energy, it is, as it tries to come out, it produces a back pressure called radiation pressure. Do you know that every radiation has a pressure? Have you heard or thought about it? This light falling on my body is putting a pressure on my body. But since it is not that energetic, it is getting reflected. If it is an X-ray source, the pressure will be so much, it will pass through my body. So any radiation produces a pressure on the surface, it is falling. Uh, so this is called the radiation pressure. This radiation pressure, when it exactly balances and matches the inward force of gravity, cancels. Sun being a ball of gas, they've been standing there for millions of years. Just imagine. We think we are so powerful, right? We are each of us. Muscle or intelligence, money, and places like West Bengal, if you don't have anything, don't worry. Political patronage is enough. The way you see it. Forget about it. You, me, everybody is alive because 15 crore kilometers away in a ball of gas, two opposite forces are continuously exactly cancelling each other every second of our existence. Right? Somebody will say that. No, I'm joking. So, that is what is life. You think you are so sure. All right. If I would have been sitting with you, your sort of honorable director saying four years, I said, no, whether I'll be alive four days, I don't know. Sure. Because how can one say to one of the sun will be the same that he is today? Nobody. How do you plan? Whatever. By the way, this condition of two things cancelling is called the condition of hydrostatic equilibrium. Today I thought I will not talk about technicalities. <coughs> if I bring down the sun from the sky, cut it like a watermelon inside the three region, the very central part where the thermonuclear fusion reaction is going on is called the core. Then the energy that is produced for a huge volume, it freely flows for the convective zone, a radiative zone, and sun is very funny looking. From the surface up to a depth of 650 kilometers, pillars of gas. Columns of gas come one, one after another. Heat comes from inside, hits the bottom layer of the gas pillar. Gas, when it is heated, rises up, comes to the surface, deposits the heat as sunlight, becoming cold like a fountain, goes down and continuously raises the heat from inside. This is called the convective zone. Outwardly, sun is again divided into three regions. The sun's high cubes, they are called chromosphere. True picture of sun's surface. Whatever. Or stuck. Ah. So this is the true picture of the surface of the sun. It doesn't look like a egg yolk, she bangalai, a It's a very scratchy surface. Each is a cell, cell of gas, coming, bringing the heat from inside, going down continuously. What is the typical size of each of these cells on the surface of the sun? We you know 952,000 kilometers in that. And this is a beautiful picture of chromosphere taken during a total solar eclipse, spikes of gas called spicules. And one of the best pictures, at least two. 
right? A total solar eclipse, you are seeing, you are seeing the moon covering up the sun and the milky white radiation which goes by the name of the corona. Nothing to do with coronavirus, corona means Latin, in Latin it means crown. It is the crown of the sun and you are seeing the corona. Suns sometimes become very active. You get, uh, what I am showing you are all true pictures. And I am an associate of NASA, you will not get to see these pictures in the internet mostly. Because for commercial purposes they cannot be used, but for academic purposes, associates can use them. You get to see black splotches, colored dhabbas on the surface of the sun. These are all true pictures of the sun. Sometimes one, sometimes 10, 20 in a group. They are called sunspots. Shouro Kolonko. What are they? The surface temperature gas, it becomes what is known as plasma. Plasma has a property. Wherever there is a magnetic field, plasma will try to get deflected from it. On the surface of the sun, there is randomly small pockets of magnetism to form. A column of plasma trying to bring the heat from inside, if it realizes that there is a magnetic field, it will not come out straight. It will take the heat away from different directions. No heat comes out of that. This region it will be dark. So, sunspots are signatures of magnetic activity on the surface of the sun. I'm not joking with you. I can challenge you that prove me wrong. Do you know how much money was spent for taking this particular photograph in 2012 by, by a spacecraft called SDO, Solar Dynamical Observatory? You don't believe, just check your internet. Google. 1.2 billion dollars, not billion, billion, 120 crore dollars, 9,600 crore rupees for one photograph. Why? Because only in the last 25, 30 years, scientists have realized sun is intimately interacting with each one of us individually every second of our existence. Not in an astrological way, don't think in that way. Realistic, physical. Each of us. Just to give you an idea, you may uh, sun will be interacting with me, okay, sun, sun is there in the evening, what happens, sun goes there, so it's not. Do you know, 24 into 7 into 365, very powerful, fast moving, not charged. Neutral particles are coming out of the surface of the sun. In the night, they will come out of the sun, hit the other side of the earth. The, movement, the speed is so much, 0.9 velocity of light, 90 percent of the velocity of light. They will pass clean through the earth, pass clean through my body and go out into space. At this moment, they are coming from the sun, passing through my body, passing through the earth, going on the other side. Do you know how particles per second on an average one square meter area? They have done the experiment n number of times. Two followed by 14 zeros. So many particles per second. They are called neutrinos. And you think I nobody can touch me. It must. This is what ignorance is bliss. If I don't know, I'm happy. Right. So Sun plays a tremendously important role. It is not a smooth object. Tremendous amount of explosions are happening on the surface of the sun. Thousands of tons of gas are getting thrown up, reaching a height of 25 to 30,000 kilometers, making beautiful arch and loops falling back onto the surface. Sometimes getting thrown up with such a force, they get detached from the surface of the sun and flow past the whole solar system, like a solar wind or solar storm. You don't believe me, right? True picture taken in 2016. Do you know what is the size of this cavity? My dear friend over here, the green t-shirt, the green t-shirt, what's your problem? See, the, my problem is that I teach, I take courses to 300 commandos in a single class. I am observing every face, even the back ones. If you're having some problem, my dear, no, no, you don't. If you're having some problem, my dear, you can either talk to your counselor over here, to the mentors, or you can get lost. You see this picture? It's a true picture taken in 2016. You know what is the size of this cavity? This cavity? Three earth will go side by side inside. This is sun. And we think this 24, 15 foot, the posters that you see in the roadside with some figures, particular people, they are the most powerful. That's the problem with us. Whatever. You see, this, this was taken in this month. No, 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 sorry, August. These are called solar filaments. And do you know this height? 10 times the diameter of Earth. This is sun. Your sun. Yeah. And you think, 
सेवेंटी वाट एलईडी बल्ब जाना है अच्छा लगता है दैट्स अ प्रॉब्लम एंड दिस चार्ज पार्टिकल इफ दे कम दे हीट यू मी दिस बिल्डिंग एनीथिंग विद इन फ्रैक्शन ऑफ अ सेकंड पफ इवैपोरेशन व्हाई वी आर अलाइव अगेन बाय एन एक्सीडेंट by accident our behaves like a bar magnet around the earth like a pills of an orange there is an invisible magnetic shield the charged particles they come and slam onto the magnetic shield you cannot enter flow past the earth and we think we are taking and we have lost us but in the bar magnet magnetic field class a class b if you have seen in the north and south magnetic polar region there are open field lines these charged particles they do enter the earth's atmosphere through these open field lines before hitting you and me and killing each other it interacts with the air molecules and make them glow and what we get to see aurora aurora borealis in north aurora australis in south now it is youtube facebook you every time you see it. what a beautiful thing believe me you should see but i have seen it couple of times mostly from the northernmost part of norway near the arctic circle i been there couple of times and is no nothing comes out of your mouth like that and recently 3 months back one of my very close friend old friend she is a scientist at the arctic center near on the topmost or northern tip of finland she sent a photograph i have never seen such a natural photograph right the color of the sky is getting reflected on the snow sheets so this is a signature of not only wow but how sun is interacting intimately with each other of us this will make you remind right okay solar system how it was formed according to the scientist 460 crore years back when from the disk of gas and dust at the center of the sun was getting born in the outer periphery where the temperature is west gas and dust condensed coagulated coalesced collided and gave birth to hot spherical objects for millions of years they dissipated away the heat and at least the first four mercury venus earth mars became rocky solid terrestrial whereas jupiter saturn uranus and neptune are made up of gas they all learned it now plus 10 11 you believe though made up of gas but how does this roadside shani temple has a image of the lord shani If it is a ball of gas, how do you know it's a boy or a girl? Forget about the image. What I'm trying to tell you, my friend, being scientific-minded is a very tough business. You cannot say, "Hey, don't touch that. That is religion." Like, uh, your science, I'm a very big scientist. It, if you're a scientist, follow science. Ask questions, right? Which we miss in our society. Sorry to say, I think a, 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 an Islamic person or a Jewish person or Christian person will say, "Ah, oh, that's not Saturn is made up of gas. So what? Yeah, it looks like a gas ball." But we Hindus, I hey, don't say that. Ah, come on, we do a puja every day. That science is not different for everyone. What different bodies? It's the same. Okay. This this is a collage of all true color of pictures of the planets. Mercury. Next is Venus. You do not get to see the surface of Venus, covered by a thick layer of concentrated sulfuric acid vapor. So when it rains on Venus, it is not droplets of water, but drops of sulfuric acid falls from the sky. Next is our mother Earth. Let us not talk about her tonight. Next is the red planet Mars. Why red? It is rusting on the surface. Ferrous and ferric oxide covers the whole surface. But this 2002 photograph taken by Hubble Space Telescope has interested the scientists because in the polar region they have found white sediments. According to them, this white sediment is a mixture of water ice, carbon dioxide ice, that is dry ice, methane ice. So even I think from your birth, before your birth, for the last years, Mars is Mars. Yes, every three to four months, television channels, newspaper, Mars. People ask why? What's so big deal about Mars? Why they're spending billions of dollars, rupees? My friend, this you will not get in the anywhere. No scientist will tell you. If the Martian soil or some water ice, there can be bacteria, virus, parasites. Because a drop of water brings million bacteria. Don't believe two years back what happened. Don't. 
or not with us. Officially, four million, actually close to some nine million. So, for you to be a happy, healthy life, for our next generation of human beings to be there, we want to know whether there is life on Mars. That's why so much of money is getting spent even by the politicians because they have, they have to sanction the money. Right? This nobody will tell you because all of us will get panicked ex 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 except one group of people. They are called astrologers. Sorry. Ya moti lagao ya. Tum bhi, tum ek, tum jindagi da me jik raho ke, sab to chai. Mars se hai. Plus, everybody will run to them. Whatever. 2008, Phoenix landed on the Mars. A lot of instruments, it had a robotic arm, which scratched a little bit on the 20th day of operation and found a white sediment. See this insect, three peoples, white, after four days, one to be seen. This is for the first time human civilization have found proof of water ice outside the boundary of Earth. 2012, 5th of August, Curiosity landed onto Mars. Amazing. The first set of pictures it sent, scientists were amazed, totally dried up riverbeds, which you get to see in Jharkhand or Bihar during the summertime. Rainy season and floods. Peoples, which can only occur if there is a flowing water. Definitely there was liquid water on Mars some day back, millions of years back. Later. So when the whole world, world, scientific world, was jumping up and down what to do, 15th of August, India's Independence Day, 2012, the then Prime Minister declared in the Lok Sabha, India is ready for a mission to Mars. I'm not existing. 5th of November 2013, sitting atop a nose cone of a PSL X-25 rocket, Mars Orbiter Mission, lovingly called by our Indian people Mangal Jan. It was not officially named as Mangal Jan at that time. Mangal Jan was drifted onto space from the Sri Horikota Center. You know that. Where is Sri Horikota? Can you tell me? Which state? Good, fantastic. 80 kilometers from Chennai along a Pulikat Lake, which is a second Chilka like freshwater lake. Okay. It was sent out to space and then it created history. 24 September 2014 at 8 02 a.m. in the morning. In the world, in its very first attempt, successfully entered Mangal Jan on an orbit around Mangal Mars. Starting from 1957, no country has been able to do it very fast. There are 50, 23 were successful and none of them were right. Whatever you say, sir, a country like India, which cannot feed 17% of its population to square meals a day, BPL, below poverty line, can they afford 484 blue rupees? Is it correct? To them I say, 2013-14, the total expenditure for fireworks in Diwali and Kali Puja was 5,000 crore rupees. Nobody thought that's a mistake. Last year, our Durga Carnival, I never say Puja, Puja has gone out of, gone out of Durga Puja now, now it has become a Carnival, 